Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am your muse Tracy. I am your favorite manifestation coach and I am here to inspire you and empower you to live the life of your dreams, to create on purpose exactly what you want in all areas of your life, to stop settling and to stop suffering. You are definitely not here to suffer. If that sounds good to you, you're more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and you can find the links for that in the description down below. Today we are going to, well I <laughs> am going to talk all about there is no opposition um, in your reality. So yeah, let's just dive right in to this one. I will tell you guys that I meant to have this up yesterday, I recorded it, and then the video was blank. So sorry for the delay. This was meant to go up. I've been so busy, um, but this is going to be a good one, you guys. There is no opposition, okay? So this, we start with you are the operant power. We start with you are the only one creating in your reality. Um, and this is the basis, right? If you're the only one creating, there is no one opposing you. There is no one, you know, resisting you or um, blocking you or standing in your way or choosing other things. There's nothing like that going on. It's just you and your uh, assumptions, your belief system, your thoughts, your conscious thoughts, your subconscious thoughts. They're just, that's what's creating your reality. Nothing else. This is one of the very first things that I work with my clients to practice and this does take some practice okay so you um, you know it, it's moving through your day and remembering at each moment and with each encounter that you're the only thinker you're the only creator you're the only mover so many different ways to say it right but it's about you recognizing as much as possible, like making it a conscious practice for you to remember, to uh, not slip back into the illusion that something is happening to you, but for you to move through your day and remember you are the only one creating. Um, so whatever's showing up is the result of your consciousness. It's like of the utmost importance to practice this because that is the nature of reality. That is the nature of what's going on. So, but <laughs> this is not how most of us were raised. This is not how we've moved through most of our life. If you're anything like me, decades, you know, of your life were spent viewing people as separate, viewing yourself as just like, you know, dealing with, settling with, the outside circumstances. In other words, not really knowing that it's all a direct reflection of me. It's all a direct reflection of my consciousness. My consciousness is a direct cause of whatever is showing up, right? So you probably have lots of experience, lots of practice moving through the world that way. So it takes some practice to view reality differently, view reality through the lens that you are creating everything. Everything is responding to you. When I say you're creating everything, you're not creating anything ever, um, right? Because creation is finished, but you are through your thoughts, conscious and unconscious, subconscious, you are selecting uh, the portion of reality that shows up around you, okay? So just to clarify, um, so yeah, most likely you've spent most of your life not viewing reality that way. It takes some practice to start to view it that way. Some conscious effort to start viewing the world as your reflection. That's all that it is. That's all that is going on, right? So some people, in addition to seeing um, everything as separate, everything as just happening, also have the concept that life is hard, that life is suffering, life is against me. For some reason, I just can't get ahead. Well, the truth is there is no such thing. There is no such thing other than a concept inside of you. There is no, you know, universal truth that your life needs to be hard, that 
things are meant to be a certain way for you. There is none of that. There is none of that. But perhaps, you know, at a younger age, you were taught to believe such things. And you didn't necessarily have a choice when you were taught to believe such things. And so that programming, um, you know, kind of went in without your discernment, without you choosing that. Okay, that's okay, because it can be changed now. You know, anytime you recognize, wow, I, ha I do have that programming. Okay, I don't want to have that programming. That's not how I choose to view life. And in fact, me continuing to view life that way will make life show me evidence of that, right? That's how this works. Your concepts, this is how powerful you are. Your concepts are being mirrored back to you. They're being reflected back to you. So if you don't like, if you don't prefer what is being mirrored back to you, all that is required is a change of your concepts. Now, of course, that's very simplified in the way I'm saying it, but, you know, from a very broad perspective, that is all that's required, a change in your concepts, your programming, your core beliefs, whatever you want to call it, your subconscious beliefs, your subconscious mind, right? There's so many different ways to say it, okay? So there is you know, there is no thing written in the stars, written in the sky that your life needs to be hard. Again, that's just a concept. It's just a perspective, right? This is a belief. This is a mindset. It's a programming. And this is not to blame. It's not to blame. So let's talk about this um, in detail. Up to the age of seven, your subconscious mind is like a tape recorder. <laughs> if you guys know what a tape recorder is, like a cassette tape and you just press record and it's just recording everything. Everything is going in, okay, into your subconscious mind. Everything goes in, everything gets recorded. You don't necessarily have a filter. There is no filter, right? You probably at that age don't even understand or know. I mean, maybe you do. Some Sometimes we do know like, oh, that doesn't really feel right or good for me. And maybe for some particular subject, you did choose, okay? That's not totally out of, you know, um, out of the question or whatever. It's not totally unheard of. But for most things, they just go right in up to the age of seven. So depending on your environment and the quality of your environment, or perhaps the lack of quality of your environment, this is the programming that has been in your subconscious mind and will continue to run the show. That's what's running the show. It's the combination of your programming and your conscious thoughts. Now, sometimes conscious thoughts are, you know, things like affirmations, inner conversations, but they're not things that we really prefer, or sorry, not prefer, really believe, okay? But our programming is what we believe, because again, we were observing that, absorbing that, recording that at a young age, and most likely, not even most likely, <laughs> what happens is when you uh, absorb that programming from a young age, that programming starts creating. You start having experiences and then those experiences reinforce that programming and you know it goes on and on and on until you learn something like this. Oh, I'm actually creating everything. Oh, and I'm actually creating it from programming beliefs that I didn't choose and I don't now prefer. Oh, okay, I need to change that, right? So yeah, and then you can go about the process of changing those beliefs. Your beliefs are a choice, you guys. Whether you have chosen them consciously or unconsciously, that's a different story. You may not have chosen your beliefs consciously, but they are a choice. Your beliefs are not universal truth, most of them. Um, some of them might be in there, but they're a choice, right? Put 10 different people into a room and look at their belief system. They're all different according to what resonates with the, the individual person, according to what that individual person decided to invest their beliefs in. So your beliefs are a choice. 
that's a really important thing for you to recognize and to realize because once you realize that, then you understand that if there's anything in your belief system that you now don't prefer, maybe things like money's hard to get or I'm not worthy of having the job, the career that I prefer, I'm not worthy of having love, I'm not worthy of having success, whatever it is. If you have some beliefs in there that you don't prefer, you know you can change them and that's empowering. So yes, there is nothing against you. There is nothing preventing you from having what you want. There's nothing opposing you. There's only you. There's only you. Okay, now once we understand that there's only one cause in our reality, which is the self, then we want to look at, um, you know, what's possible. Well, we know everything is possible. Creation is finished. So everything already exists. If you can have a thought about it, it already exists. You don't have to create anything. So I'm going to read this quote from Neville about creation is finished. So this is the quote, because creation is finished, what you desire already exists. It is excluded from your view because you can only see the contents of your own consciousness. It is the function of an assumption to call back the excluded view and restore full vision. It is not the world, but your assumptions that change. Such a brilliant quote, you guys. So yes, no one to change but self, right? No one to change but self, no one to change but your own assumptions. A change in your consciousness or assumptions creates a change in your environment. So there's nothing, you know, when you start to move through the world and understand, you know, you may still encounter things that you don't necessarily prefer, but those things you don't necessarily prefer doesn't mean that like that is a limitation. That is a, something against you. That is something, you know, standing in your way. No, nothing like that. That thing that is showing up that you do not necessarily prefer is a a result of your consciousness, a result of your ideas, your assumptions, your, your beliefs. And so once you see something, experience something that you do not prefer, then all you need to understand is that this is not hard facts. This is not hard facts. Your 3D reality is not hard facts, you guys. 3D reality is responding to you. You are the cause. You are the cause. So anything that you do not prefer showing up, all you need to recognize is that to change this thing that I do not prefer requires a change in what? Not the person's opinion, not the person's concept. No, not their thing if it's a person that you're dealing with, but you. It's about changing you and your concepts and your consciousness. So if there is no opposition, then it's just you and you. So then why doesn't your reality, reality look more like what you would prefer? The answer is your belief system. It's always back to the belief system, your programming, right? I prefer to call it programming. I prefer not to talk so much about subconscious beliefs um, because that leads people to think like, oh, it's hidden. It's subconscious. I don't know what it is. It's, um, you know, sabotaging me when I don't know what it is and it's hidden and it's hard to get to, right? It just, the whole um, word or concept sounds difficult. So I don't, I don't like to make things sound difficult because it's not, it's not. Your programming will show up in your reality. This is why when you learn about manifesting and you start affirming, everything doesn't just immediately show up. I mean, immediately in terms of like with a time delay, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes we affirm, 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 and then, you know, months maybe years, it's not there. Well, why would that be? Why would that be if it's just you? The only reason that would be is because consciously you're thinking about your affirmations, but dominantly your programming is in direct conflict with that affirmation. 
if your programming wasn't in direct conflict with your affirmation, your affirmations would be, voila, showing up in your reality. Because there is just you and you. There's nothing else going on. There's nothing else asserting. There's nothing written in the sky, written in the books, written anywhere that says, whatever you're affirming for, you don't get to have. No, there is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. So if you're affirming, 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 and it's not showing up, it's not becoming visible to you, it must be something going on within you. And that is the programming, right? Because there's nothing opposing you, nothing going on outside of you. Everything is just reflecting you. So again, this takes a little bit of practice. This is something that, again, the very first thing that I teach my clients when we're working together in, in my intensive coaching, start to move through your day where you are recognizing everything is your creation. And again, not about blame. It's about recognizing, like looking through a different lens, looking through a different filter, because the filter most of us practiced for many, many years, again, decades, <laughs> if you're anything like me, is through the lens of like, oh, life is just happening. Oh, that is there. And now since that is there in my environment, I need to adjust myself to that thing. No, you don't actually. You don't have to accept what's in your 3D reality as real and true. So my next video coming up is about um, turning any brick wall into a doorway, which I've talked about before, but I'm going to do a brand new video all about it. And this is what I'm talking about. Whatever is in your 3D reality that seems to maybe be like a brick wall, like no way around it, no way around it, you can't go through it, anything like that, you guys, it is not. It is not. There is a parallel reality where the solution exists. Okay, so if right now in your current parallel reality or your current reality, you are experiencing a brick wall of some kind, okay, what do you do? You don't start knocking down the wall. You don't start looking at the wall and wondering why the wall is there. You don't start wondering how long the wall will be there and, you know, how maybe you can talk to the wall and get it to move. No, you don't do any of that. You just simply ask yourself, what would I prefer rather than this brick wall? This brick wall is not my preference. Okay, so I know there's a parallel reality where my preference exists. So I'm going to shift myself, my consciousness into that parallel reality where what I prefer already exists. So it's like you use that brick wall as a doorway to walk through into the parallel reality where your desire exists. Okay, not what this video is about, you guys, but stay tuned. That one's coming. So, yes. I think we've hit it today. There is no opposition. It's a change in your, your filter though, okay? It requires a change in your filter. You start looking at everything as you, as your creation. If it's not what you prefer, which is very normal, by the way, we're not trying to move into reality where, you know, there's no um, things that we don't prefer, okay? Uh, Anything that you don't prefer is providing clarity for you. It's providing clarity. You get very clear. Oh, I don't want that. I do want that. Cool. Then you can start to shift your consciousness, shift your beliefs if that's required into recognizing what it is that you do want, aligning with what you do want, shifting into the parallel reality where what you do want already exists, and then it becomes visible in your 3D reality, like Neville said. It's a change in your consciousness that calls back the invisible, right? He, everything already exists, you guys. So if anything is not showing up yet, it just requires a change in your consciousness because there's nothing else going on. It's just you and you. It's just you and you. All right, you guys, leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.